Hey everyone, and welcome back to part two of my tutorial series on an RP0 career. So last time we launched some basic sounding rockets. Um, we got a bunch of science. We had the regular Black Corporal style sounding rocket, and then a boosted one, then the equivalent of a bumper whack where there's a basically an A4 or V2 at the bottom stage, and then a, a whack sounding rocket at the top stage. Um, we expected test flight failures, so we had a bunch of extra building, um, so that's why we have some spares. But the last mission, we broke 1,200 kilometers. Um, we got a bunch of science from space above, a bunch of different biomes, so we don't actually need to keep building these anymore. So we're going to go ahead and scrap them. So let's assess where we're standing in terms of research. We've got almost 21 science points. Um, we actually already have this unlocked, uh, but it's taking a while to unlock. It's still like three quarters of a year to unlock it. So we also have this to be unlocked. Um, so we have almost 21 science points. Uh, so we can totally pick up early avionics and early construction. Uh, I'm not going to, as I mentioned in the last episode, I'm not going to be doing planes this tutorial series because a lot of people skip them. They're fiddlish. They take a while. They're a lot of fun. Uh, I like doing them, but for a tutorial series, they're a bit, you know, might as well do something else. So instead, um, let's go ahead and unlock... I think we want early avionics next. Then we want early construction. Now it gets interesting. We're definitely going to want basic avionics. Um, because that will give us our first serious avionics units. It gives us the, um, the, the 2 meter and 3 meter guidance units. Um, and we're also going to want basic orbital rocketry, which has all sorts of important early engines. Um, we're going to want basic solids eventually, but they're really expensive. Um, so yeah, we... I think we probably... this We can't actually afford anything else at this tier, so we might as well go ahead and get basic avionics. We know we'll need it. Eventually, and that will give us another upgrade point for KCT. Let's look at upgrades. We should have two. We have three. Ah, I missed one. Right, we have three. So we're going to pump that all in science because we're building stuff fast enough. Um, we have 67,000 funds. Uh, so we're going to have to look at upgrading our launch pad at some point. We're going to have to look at upgrading our tracking station at some point. We have to look at upgrading mission control at some point. We need the launch pad to launch more than 40 tons. We need the tracking station to be able to see whether we get intercepts with other bodies and get full patch conic support. And we need mission control so we can accept more than three contracts and so that we can create maneuver nodes and do flight planning. Um, so I think probably what we're going to want first is the launch pad. These prices are roughly, that's 60000 this is 75000 upgrade, and this is a measly 30000 upgrade. Um, but we're probably going to want the launch pad first. Uh, ideally, we'd get both of these at the same time, and this. So, yeah, while we're waiting for early orbital rocket to unlock, still 200 days, there's really only one other major thing we can do with sounding rockets, and that's send up a biosample and recover it. So... Yeah, we're not gonna... We don't want to get very high with our... our biosample rocket, so we'll just do it without a contract. So, let's 
let's see. What are we going to do? Um, I think our best bet is again to, to we'll, we'll use the A4 bottom. So let's add something fairly simple, a sounding rocket core. Sample capsule. Then a pair of these in 90 degree symmetry. Uh, do it more like that, I think. Then we're going to need a parachute because we actually do want to recover this stuff. So I think actually I'm just going to put a couple of these radial rail shoots on. Out there, I think we want smaller than that. Uh, so this is how you how you um, do the sizing on a procedural rail shoot. You go to action repetitor, you click on the shoot, and you get this. So let's make them a little smaller. Let's now apply to all symmetry counterparts. There, that's much less ugly. Uh, move them back out again a bit so they're not clipping as badly. Now let's actually examine what the settings were. Um, use current craft mass, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to say 5 meters per second so we'd be sure we don't have any trouble. Parachutes used. We have them in 2x symmetry, we're setting 2 here. Uh, we want them to pre-deploy at 2500, fully deploy at 700 should be fine. Uh, well, let's not take chances. We apply. Mass went... The, these things mass almost nothing. Because um, this is only 118 kilos. You know, I'm actually... That doesn't sound quite right. Where's the... It's really only two kilograms of parachute? That seems odd to me. Let's claim using wet mass, just in case. Main, want to touch down speed, two. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess it real shoot really thinks that's only going to mass two kilos a shoot worth of, of nylon. Uh, okay, so... The next thing we want to do, I think, is let's add ourselves a procedural decoupler, and then a bunch of these as retros. We probably don't actually need retros, but, you know, might as well. Um, hmm. that's actually a fairly considerable amount of retrofire. Um, yep. So, finally, let's put a cubic strut here, just to space it above a fairing. And let's go ahead and add this fairing. Alright, before we do that, let's also action group this stuff. So we want this one on three and these on four. Okay, I think we're going to want this at one meter. We don't actually need avionics on this thing, so I'm not even going to bother. Uh, let's do, we start at 1 meter, we want a bottom of 1.65 meters for the A4 engine, and we want 
some length. Let's put the engine on. Structural. Um, this needs to be in a different stage. Right. So we have 41 seconds of burn. So we're actually going to go, you know, we can leave it at about 87, I guess. Um, maybe I'll go one set two. But if, well, let's do a minute 10. Um, and because I'm like that, I want to match up the panel lines. <laughs> Um, okay, put the fins on, four of them, huh, 1.6, yeah, that's right, okay, and per experience last time, we're basically disabling their control functionality. Now the last bit is going to be the payload fairings. Let's try some cone egg fairings. We don't need them to be that high. Um, and so now we can see what's going on. Hmm. They're poking through. Okay. Well. Uh, we can make this wider, can't we? Now they're not poking through. That's better. Okay, that will do. Uh, I'm fairly sure that this actually has... is aerodynamically stable, but let's watch what happens. Heh <laughs> yeah. That is kinda not aerodynamically stable. Okay, so... Yeah, that's kind of the textbook definition of not aerodynamically stable. Um, what do we do? We put bigger fins on. Oops. Come on. We only want four of these things. Right. Okay. And actually, I guess it can be not incredibly thin. Uh, that is acceptable. All right, <laughs> that level of fin is going to be okay, I think. Yes, that's ludicrously aerodynamically stable. I don't know, we'll just call it kite because that was kind of the first word that came to mind at the moment. Um, I think we want the leading edge to be somewhat longer, so. Nice and round. Yeah. Okay. That's that's decent. Um so we certainly don't want this to be launching straight up so it falls straight down. So let's tilt it slightly. And We really only need a couple clamps. And we'll toggle the pumps. Bring this down. Right. Staging sequence. We want main engine, the clamps, 
the fairings, then we're going to decouple and burn those retros. We're going to decouple that and the shoots. That seems reasonable to me. Uh, we're going to cut off the engines once we get to about 200 kilometer apogee. Uh, so we're not going to burn them the whole length. Um, so, yeah. Now, downside, of course, is that we're not going to be pointed exactly retrograde when we fire those retros because we're just going up unguided, aerodynamically stabilized. We will go up. We'll have burnout about here. We'll start decri describing a course like this coming down, and we'll still be pointed like that. So we'll gain some rightwards velocity. Um, I believe I have cursor turned on, so that should actually come out through the video. Um, but yeah. Uh, so we do have three bio samples in here, so we can get flying low, flying high, and in space. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and do this. We're going to build two because it's always possible for something to error out, to test flight to kill an engine, or me to make a mistake, or who even knows. Uh, these are fairly fast to build because um, we didn't put any avionics in them. On the other hand, the biosamples are not that cheap. So there's one. Let's check this again. Medium. No, it's still 340. So we, we're not going to do that. Um, four hours to roll out. It's the night. I'm not going to do this at night. I want to actually see. So... Dawn launch. Yep, let us hope it is sufficiently aerodynamically stabilized. So we're going to fire the engines, let it get up to full thrust, decouple the clamps, and then hope nothing goes wrong. Away we go. Okay, when my Apogee gets up to about 180, I'll kill it. And that should probably be about right. And the fins are doing their job. Yeah, for sounding rockets, or for basically for anything that's essentially going to be aerodynamically stabilized, you definitely want to know <laughs> whether you're going to be stable or not. And for the A4, with so this is an interesting historical fact. Um, when V2s were launched as sounding rockets, the A4 is, of course, the internal designation for the, the aggregate 4. Um, and then it was, was called the V2 in, in service with this. Now, they... Uh, when they were used to sounding rockets, you actually had to put like a ton of, ball of lead ballast up in the nose to keep them stable. Because as you saw, because we only have about 150 kilos in the nose, maybe 200, the engine's heavy enough that when the fuel tank is empty, e yeah. Whoops, I was totally not paying attention, and our apogee is 500 kilometers. Well, we'll see if we survive. I also wasn't paying attention because we're already <laughs> almost in space. So we'll get the, the flying science on the way down, I think. Ah, got busy talking about how the V2 was a thing. Um, all right, so... We're going to ride up to Apogee. Um, we're now in space, so we're going to take one of these samples and recycle the other. The other one we'll use once we get back down to flying. Uh, let's ride on up.
writing down. Alright, so at about a hundred and... I don't know. 160 kilometers? I'm going to get rid of the fairings. Well, actually, no, we'll do about 200. We'll get rid of the fairings, and then about 160 we'll ignite the retros. Okay, fairings are gone. I trust we still have enough electric charge. Oh, yeah, we're fine. All right, 180, 170, 160. Okay, that did impart some spin, which was not awesome, but that's okay. Decouple that. All right, and let's hope we survive the re-entry. If not, we do have that backup. Like I said, there's something's probably going to go wrong half the time, so... You always build two. And let's arm the chutes, just in case for some reason we lose communication. And let's save that. Hope nothing burns up. That's pretty high G-forces. Happily nothing burnt up. Um, this appears to be successful despite my not really paying attention. We're subsonic. Mach points what is that? Mach point six seven or so? Yeah, we're still sixteen kilometers up. kilometers. Yeah, this appears to have been a successful mission. So assuming this pay this doesn't sink, which I don't think it will, we're only 117 kilos and that's, uh, this is point, what, point 0.5 or point 0.65 diameter. So yeah, we're probably almost three quarters of a cubic meter of volume. So we'll float. Um, getting close to parachute opening. Four kilometers up, three and a half kilometers up. Definitely out over the ocean. Yeah, we've lost signal, so good we armed the parachutes long before. There they go. And now we wait. Four hundred meters. Should get a nice load of science from this. Also, we must be almost out of electric charge. Oh, no, we still got. Almost half of it. That's pretty good. Ten meters and sploosh. Right. 
That went well. Okay. Thirteen point eight science earned. That was nice. And we even got some money back. So now we can go ahead and unlock that because we know we're going to need it. There we go. Alright, so that concludes the sounding rockets that we need to launch, so let's um, and we can stick one more upgrade there. Ah, uh, so oops. Do I want to? No, I don't think I want to spend an upgrade. Uh, we have 166 days, so because this is tutorial, uh, if I were playing this for real, I would probably continue to launch sounding rockets while waiting for these things to come due, or launch planes, or something. But we're just going to go ahead and warp to it. <laughs> 